Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions and I answer them. Update on the move! As you can see, things are starting to come together behind me. Uh, there's still a bunch of stuff that belongs on those shelves, but for now, at least the shelves are here. Uh, trying to get back into a more regular schedule. I have a bunch of plans in terms of YouTube content that I'm going to be doing, including Final Fantasy XV Comrades this coming week, some discussion videos regarding Final Fantasy XIV popular topics, the revamp of the Bestiary series, as well as a brand new Bestiary, which will be the first one that you actually see of the revamped one. I wouldn't even say that one's revamped. I'd say revamping is more like going back to the old ones and making them more recent, and that's going to be a big thing that we're doing uh, for like the next couple of months or so, at least on a weekly schedule. Uh, and other than that, just, uh, you know, just getting settled in, in the new, in the new apartment. Uh, this last weekend was a bit of a disappointment for me, but it just couldn't kind of be helped. And I've kind of accepted that at this point. Uh, so every year I do extra life, which is a, uh, you know, it's a charity foundation that works with the children's specialized hospitals around the United States. I specifically always raise money for the New Jersey children's specialized hospitals. Um, that being said, because of the move and the amount of money I was spending on that, I didn't really have much prepared for Extra Life this year, so I only raised kind of just over $2,000. I know most people will say that's better than nothing, but the last several years we managed to raise over $5,000 both years. So, and then the year before that, even over $3,000. So this year, I really didn't do that good of a job with Extra Life, but I kind of just accepted that the time that it happened was not going to work that well for me. And on top of that, I could keep raising money for Extra Life throughout the month, but with the move that just happened, I can't really afford to do that. And on top of that, I have another charity event at the end of the month for Gaming Tuesday on November 28th. Uh, that's going to be for the Save the Children Foundation, so I want to make sure that there's a little bit of a gap for people to... Uh, get their money back and so I can actually talk about it on things like Mondays or on the live stream and get people ready for it because I didn't really condition people or get them ready for extra life because of everything that was going on with me behind the scenes so that's kind of where I sat I was a little I was well, I wasn't a little I was really disappointed with myself like I ended the stream I was like all right I fucked up I ended the stream and I just kind of just ate food because I was like all right I need to eat my depression away hold on so uh let's let's just do that with that done though we have to move on. We have to move on to bigger and better things and look forward to the next time that we can do something for charity. And we have Mondays with Mr. Happy to do. So we have Q&A. We have about, looks like, 17 questions on the forum. Plus, we'll, if they're good, grab a few from the chat, the live chat here. So uh, let's get started. All right, question number one. Hey, Haps, you want to tell me that Shirogane was faster down than Ultimate Bahamut? What is 14, housing simulator? Well, if it was a simulator, people would have houses. So, No. I'm just gonna say, that. what the fuck healer, what the fuck Q, and Far East tankiness joke. I'm gonna go with what the fuck healer, and I'm gonna actually move this over a little bit so I can see what's actually on the screen a little bit better. Okay, once I got that damage debuff as a DPS in Titan Hard mode, I told the healer to Asuna me so I could damage again. The healer didn't told me I'm raiding. I'm an 04 Savage. I don't use Asuna in content like this. How I understood? I don't care about old content. I ignore gains. I will say that as a healer, I don't always remember to change my roll actions just for a trial roulette. So sometimes it just kind of happens. I wouldn't respond like that in in particular, but I gotta say that's more common than I think people give it credit for. Just, people don't like changing around roll actions. Like, I'm not gonna be like, wait, don't pull, let me equip Asuna. And I can't know in advance that I'm gonna get Titan, and then the tank pulls immediately, and it's, it is, it is what it is. Another story, a bit more recent, in Dumbscape. First boss, death sentence, 20 seconds, I died. Multiple times. What the fuck is wrong with Asuna? Like, I, th I kinda answered it. It's just people don't wanna change roll actions for shit they don't do frequently. That's all it is. It's obnoxious for content that where it's needed and in the case of Dunscathe there's more than enough time at the start of the fight to go okay I got Dunscathe let me put Asuna on the first boss literally has a mandatory Asuna mechanic uh, so whereas Titan it's like ah, who gives a shit the fight will be dead in 20 seconds maybe you know it's a little more reasonable but yeah I mean that's all it is people just, just want to change role actions because they're like well fuck it's not the role actions I need for the content I'm actually doing so whatever that's it that's that's what's wrong it's not Asuna it's just an inconvenience in quotes all right number two hi Mr. Happy this is Widget first timer thank you love all your streams thank you and thanks for the service you had to the community thank you so thank you three times since I'm returning sub to your channel I claim the right of two questions and that is your bonus then or that's my bonus neither of those are correct uh let's see and add and a bonus. Oh, is the bonus at the end? Because you're really happy to always answer lame questions. I don't where is the bonus? I don't know where the bonus is. Anyway, question number one. Why would you see me as why would what would you see as some new monk skills or changes coming in the next expansion? Honestly, it's impossible to guess. A lot of people keep guessing chi blast so that 
Monk has a ranged attack. I personally don't really care because I've been happy that Monk has remained pretty consistent over the expansions. And I don't know how they're going to preserve that going into the next expansion. I, I feel like they might be hitting their limit of like what really like minor things you can add outside of more options for your chakras. Like, I don't know, some sort of AoE option, for example. Uh, but that's about it. I don't really have a wish list. Uh, tackle Mastery is at least a 30 potency buff to Fire Tackle or to Shoulder Tackle because of Fire Tackle. Um, deep Meditation, you know, I have so much crit that it's not bad most of the time, so I don't really need any changes there. I like Riddle of Fire and I like Brotherhood, so I don't know. I don't really, those are the, I guess just use that. An AoE Chakra Expender and, uh, and Chi Blast. Those are the two I'll do there. Two, uh, if you were forced to pick a job that you had to play only for the rest of the year, next expansion, what would be why? Monk, because I love it. So it's good that you asked me the first question about that, because I fucking love Monk. That is my answer. My answer would be Monk, so there you go. And because I like it, because punch, punch, kick, kick, dead. That's what I'm talking about. Question for fun, if you had to pick a party out of those in-game characters from the Science of the Seventh Dawn, dude, I don't trust any of those motherfuckers. All right, they look really OP in the cutscenes, and they seem really OP in the thing, but then they're always asking me to pick up, like, rocks and shit off the ground. I'm not having that. This is some bullshit that they do right there. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. One of them's blind. One of them ain't got magic anymore. It's just, it's problems, man. It's problems. All right, number three. Ayo, ayo, what's up? Got two for you. First is something that's been driving me up a wall. Every time I post a question that has a swear in it, it gets censored. Is there a way to prevent that? Or is there something that'll always happen? It'll happen, but it's whatever. You know, it's just censored. And then I say, or you just type it in all capital. Don't do this. Type it in all capital letters and with spaces. So like F space U space C space K. And maybe that'll do it. I don't know. If it means that much to you. Uh, do you know any good sources for openers and rotations? So there's not just sources. Each individual person kind of has their own place. You need to learn the names of the people who are creating the guides. There's no one collective place where you can go to find all of that information. It's a little inconvenient, but it's just because people use whatever avenues best for them. Maybe it's YouTube. Maybe it's their free company blog. Maybe it's the, the Final Fantasy XIV blog itself that nobody uses except for like some people. Or maybe it's Reddit. You know, people have different, just people have just different places they like to post. You just kind of got to Google the guide you're looking for, and that's generally going to be your only bet. All right, number four. Hello, Mr. Happy. This is Sydney Draxy. They say that Draxy, I almost said Drac is from Fanfred. Been watching your videos for a while, huh? Thanks for all the new videos and info you provide for 14. Thank you for watching. First time asking, but can't think of a bonus you'll like. Guess it's better than Blitzball. You're goddamn right it is. Anyways, my question is, do you think it's a good idea if they add a new way to show physical magic damage taken? Yeah! Um, I've actually been advocating for that for a while now. There should be some sort of in-game way to track the sources. For most attacks, it's pretty obvious, but for some attacks, it's not, you know? And that can matter for people when they're trying to plan things properly. Most people who do it, do it through ACT. Like, they'll check, you know, what did I take? Was that magic damage, physical, darkness damage? And you can figure it out through that. But something in-game, even though I'm colorblind, the idea of being able to add, uh, to change the, uh, the, f the floating damage numbers that pop up when you take damage to display whether it's physical or magical, as much as I'd probably have a hard time seeing the difference that they would pick, I've always advocated for that because I feel like it's just more clarity for the players in the game. You then have to educate them that that's how it works and that can sometimes be a concern because people don't read shit. But it's something you can do. You can do. I don't see any reason why you uh, why why it can't be done. So yeah, that's that's my answer. All right, number five. Hello, Mister Happy. I just finished the Astro Quest line. Hey, I just finished that Astro Quest line this week too. Don't honk. Uh, and I'm now up to speed on the introduced lore for Geomancers. There's going to be a question about that. I didn't pay much attention. I only know that they're kind of present there. What do you think about them make any different in the Far East version of Conjure? See, that's kind of all they are. Like, there are some other key differences there. And it's always, they could always retcon it saying that they didn't actually show you what makes a Geomancer a Geomancer in those, uh, in those quests. But realistically, that's what they are. That's what a Geomancer is. It is basically the Far Eastern version of a Conjurer. And that's established multiple times throughout that quest line this is actually one of the few things i can comment on so it would be i mean as long as the elements are being used as a base there's always room for them to just throw things on top of that and say this is this is what real geomancy looks like not just what we saw in a quest because they weren't they didn't want to fully develop abilities for a job that doesn't exist and they may not know they're doing so you can't just throw abilities in there and be like well that's what geomancy is because then people will be like well confirm they're going to add a job they already put skills into the game so it's just setting the foundation for something they may or may not end up doing later all right, number six. Greetings, Mr. Happy. Once again, I've returned to kill a little bit more time while I sit in a DPS queue, because those are still too damn long. And I still have five DPS to level. Send help. I wish I could. 
that would that would apply that would having having me apply as a, as a tank would do it if I could learn to English or talk at all. One, how come I can pull the time limited units like L's and two B from the Halloween? I know you're talking about mobile games, but the units that are going to just be in the game from now on, I either don't pull with any amount of effort, don't pull. That's what we call RNG Jesus, and he has blessed you in one way. But when RNG Jesus giveth, RNG Jesus also taketh away. You cannot otherwise. You cannot have true balance. Two. When you think, when do you think we're getting Ultimate Ozma? I don't know. This was a discussion I had. Technically, the first fight for Ultimate we were supposed to get was Titan, but Pseudo, the developer behind it. Uh, advocated that they do Bahamut first because it would probably uh, hit people in the fields, be a lot more nostalgic to people than Titan would. As much as Titan is, like, the what he had planned for Bahamut, he's like, we have to do this. Um, so, will they do Titan next? Who knows? You know, they don't have to do Titan next because they never developed it in the first place. They are more than welcome to do something different. Maybe they do Alexander, maybe they do the Warring Triad, maybe they do Gilgamesh and, Gilgamesh and Enkidu and Ultros and Typhon and all those guys. Maybe they do Ozma, who knows? But Ozma is also designed initially as a 24-man boss and has to be changed to fit eight people, which is somewhat of a concern in terms of actually creating a scenario that is, I guess doable like he would have to function uh, very very differently and his arena itself would probably have to be changed overall as well so it's hard to tell because they're not going to do a 24 man ultimate ozma that's not going to happen so it's it's a tough call I, I don't have my money on ozma happening anytime soon uh but that being said anything could happen nobody knows anything so that's not even it's not a fact it's my thoughts all right, number seven. Holy moly, that's a lot of text. Maybe there's a TLDR. Hello, Mr. Happy. Question at the bottom if you don't want to read all the text. What a champion. What a champ. I want to give you a bonus. Anyway, I would like your opinion on something very important in Final Fantasy XIV. Okay, what I like to do with these is I read the TLDR and go, do I need context for this? So let me grab the long story short here at the bottom. Long story short, do you think someone's gear, the fact that someone doesn't raid all the time makes them a bad player? Gear is never a determining factor. Uh, you could simply, you could beat the raid and then log out for fucking ever and then never have better gear and still be good enough to beat the raid. And you're not raiding all the time. I mean, most people raid log. You raid for like one, one and a half hours a week and then you go do something else. It's like, that's, those technically fall under both the things that happen to a lot of people who don't like do multiple characters and like join random party finders and shit like that. So no, I mean, it doesn't have to mean those things, can it? It doesn't, it doesn't even have to mean you're a bad player. It could mean you're unmotivated to do those two specific things. Raid all the time or increase your item level because they're uninteresting to you. Who knows? Maybe you tapped into some latent skill or latent desire to improve or to increase the uh, time spent doing these things. Who knows? Maybe you'll be a good raider. But a lot of the people that do that, they don't care and that's fine because they don't have to care because no, one, not everyone has to care about the things I care about. So... Uh, no, it, it does. it's not inherently there, but people will use it kind of like as a judging factor because it's the internet and it's easy to be an asshole. So, uh, yeah, no. My answer, my short answer, which is after the long answer, is, uh, is no. It doesn't inherently make them a bad player. Alright, number eight. Tame. Oh my god, you guys are typing so much text. Hey, Mr. Happy, I want to provide some words of wisdom for you and your audience and follow it up with a serious question. It's a touch long. Oh god, is this about meta? Yeah, because I see the word Dark Knight in here. This is about meta. Okay, I'm going to read the question because I don't necessarily think I need words of wisdom on this topic. Thank you very much. All right, here's my question. Do you think World First Ultimate... Co wow, this question came really late. World First Ultimate Coil of Bahamut should be constituted... Continue justification for Dark Knight getting the attention it needs. No, it should not be. Jobs can be poorly designed and still perform. If anything, it's more a testament that the job isn't in dire need of things. It's just clearly less efficient in every way than the other jobs that it's being compared to. I'd say the one place Dark Knight definitely still wins is if tank magic damage is like a massive, massive factor. Uh, because uh, TBN and, and Grit and Dark Mind all together is a lot of fucking mitigation. That being said, that's one scenario that can uh, that can be met in cases like Ultimate Coil of Bahamut. Which, by the way, it's been world seconded with a warrior at this point. So it's not like the first two groups did it. One group chose to do it because, hey, the guy's like, I like playing Dark Knight, so that's what I'll prog on. And the other guy was like, okay, well, I'm a warrior because I don't know what the other reason. He was just a warrior instead. Who the hell knows? Um, but no, it's not, it should not be continued justification that Dark Knight doesn't need changes. Things like Dark Passenger being nigh useless, things like the, uh, the Blackest Knight being such a huge sacrifice to use 
in terms of the overall efficiency of the job. Things like that shouldn't exist when the other jobs have pretty much had all of those issues removed. It's about being equal and not necessarily being meta, which is a discussion that I had in a separate video from this. Uh, would you agree that the most metrics make a tank performance-wise? Paladin Warrior just generally better across the board? Yeah. I'd say mathematically Paladin Warrior is better across the board. Outside of the one situation that I just named where you pretty much have a Dark Knight that can go full defensive with Dark Mind TBN grit on like every tank buster. And looking at the last phase of Bahamut, that definitely was valuable to the group that got world first there, but not necessary as the, the second group didn't have Dark Knight. You think we st well, will should still see changes to bring up the, to the other tanks level. Yeah, I like. I mean, the answer to all of these is pretty much, it's it's no, yes, yes, pretty much. I don't think they need a big buff. They just, it's just fine tuning. It's kind of like how Machinist is really fucking good right now, but it plays like shit. Um, or like how Summoner is really fucking good right now, but pets still control like ass, and Bahamut still likes following you randomly around the arena. That doesn't mean you shouldn't fix those things just because the job is performing well. It just means those things suck. Please, <laughs> please fix them. That's it. That's all it is. All right, number nine. Sup, Haps. Sup. I know all the rage on who's going to beat Ultimate first. It's weird. When did the other comment come in? You must have... Ed this person must have edited this. Because November 1st? This was... It wasn't World Firsted on November... Yeah, this had to have been edited. I don't actually see an edit date. Oh, yeah, last edited today at 5.57. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was a different question before the question before this. Okay, because I was going to say, wait a minute. How did the... How's question number eight about Ultimate? It's on November 1st. Uh, let's see. Uh, ultimate first, what if devs did... No, don't do a 24-man savage. Don't do that shit, dude. Our community would never survive a 24-man savage or 24-man ultimate style content. Just the community would completely crumble. If you want to do something else that would completely crumble the community, trying to put fucking 20, 24 people together in the same spot and get them to fucking get along, that'll do it. Even in World of Warcraft where high-end guilds, you know, do that, where they have the mythic 20-man 20, 20 shit, you always hear horror stories of people who are who, whose egos are getting against each other and there's constant replacing and new groups popping up of people who left old groups and then they overcome. There's so much fucking drama when you try to put together more than like 10 people 10 people is like my personal like hey we should just that should be the fucking cutoff at that point um that being said it's like for pug shit yeah but for something like savage no nah, i'm not down for that shit dude it's just not worth it all right number 11 hey oh haps another sunday recording for a monday video yep at the time of posting ultimate remains uncleared born you were here earlier were you gonna edit this or are you just gonna ask another one <laughs> We assume a nerf is inevitable, which we're not anymore. Regard regardless of what many may think on the subject, what do you pro what do you propose? Propose purpose would be <laughs> adjustments that wouldn't ruin the overall integrity. Okay, so let's just pretend ultimate's not defeated for the sake of answering this question. What would they do to nerf this fight but not ruin its integrity? I guess a fold made a really good post about um, about RNG. In mechanics you can have mechanics that always function exactly the same but the means through which they actually function can be drastic enough that you may see a situation very rarely that's just straight up more difficult because hey that's what ha excuse me that's what happened and guess what now 13 minutes of your time is gone the example he gave i believe was heaven's fall trio where there's eight towers around the arena and sometimes you get four on one side four on the other sometimes you get six on one side and two on the other and there's no real way of knowing that so the consistency levels there uh, diminish, and then it kind of prolongs your experience because you may you may completely come up with a strategy that works, and they get RNG'd into something that uh, that is just a problem. So that's it. Is reducing situations like that. Like if you're going to do eight towers and they're completely random where along the outside of the room they are, and it can lead to huge variances in the way that strategies are actually effective on said mechanic, which in turn, affects the number of successful pulls you'll get to even see to the end of the fight. That's about it. You can't do anything else to a fight. You can't reduce the numbers. You can't reduce the health. You can't reduce... You can't just change the full mechanics. Like, oh, now there's only six towers. You know, don't do that shit. Make it so there's still eight towers, but that's it. And even then, that's still taking away from what the original fight was, which people have beaten. So, realistically, the advice would be to just fucking do it and stop complaining about it. That doesn't mean it's good design, but it, once someone's cleared it like that, and it can be cleared like that, there's, like, grounds to say that it's shitty is still there, but grounds to change it kind of wavers, if that makes sense. All right, number 12. Hey, guy. Stop it. I've been seeing on Reddit people verifying that Engage still works. <laughs> Every single patch, there's a post on Reddit going, Hey, guys, latest hotfix. 
Engage still works. Uh, option was always available as a glitch for some people. Engage is an action, but what happens when you use engage with... Let's just use the most popular one. If you have double archers in squadrons and you spam engage, their barrage cooldown will reset every five seconds. So basically every other global cooldown for them is getting the barrage effect. And you can clear Stone Vigil in like seven minutes because of that. You can even clear Wanderer's Palace in like nine minutes because of that. And that's what people have been doing to like power level their squadrons or even power level themselves. Like they'll like go as a DPS or a tank or a healer and they'll at least have one or have one or two depending on what the party makeup is archers and they'll just blow through it and they'll level themselves up to like 55 56 doing that so that's why it's such a big deal uh it, so that's what you're missing all right number 13 happy howdy mr happy it's been a while since i've had to say that one what about mounting your mic's base to the wall oh no i got a solution for that um i actually so i'm using a dx racer gaming desk my girlfriend got it for me for our anniversary last year not this year last year and it has two plastic ends on the side uh so basically you can put things on the desk and there's no chance of them kind of sliding off it also has a, a wrist rest which has been pretty good um i basically took off one of those plastic ones and mounted it to that so that's what it's currently mounted to right now um, I guess I forgot that last week I was still using... The, I was using the headset mic last week. I, I kind of forgot that. So we have a roulette that's only two questions. Intro. I'll take the intro one. Is there a relation of intro trailer, Derp Lander, and the Warrior of Darkness? No, they just look the same. That's it. We are in every trailer... The, the Derp Lander is just representing the Warrior of Light, which is us. The Warrior of Darkness, they designed to look like Derp Lander. And that's, that's, that's really all there is to it. There's no like direct lore correlation between the two of them. Number 14. Hey, Mr. Happy. I hope you're doing fine. I'm doing pretty good. And I know the person who's asking this question is in the chat, so hopefully you enjoy my answer. Thanks for your feedback a few months ago. I decided to give rating a chance. After much trouble, I finally found myself a static during the last two weeks. We've been gone from wiping 0-1 Savage to clearing all the way to Phase 2 0 Savage. Now that is a success story if I've ever heard one. We are a fresh new static where no one has rated together before. Our average item level is only about 330, and our composition is far from optimal. I think I know where this is going after reading that sentence. Lately, we have been trying to engage in discussion, sorry, and uh, talk and talks about the new ultimate boss. Halfway joking, halfway mentally preparing that if we keep up this improvement, could be rating more competitive next rate tier. Problem is that any feedback or opinion we get from trying to engage in community is you guys are trash. <laughs> Yeah, the general consensus is if you hadn't already beaten 04 Savage by the time Ultimate came out, most people kind of just write you off. Not the best thing to do because, you know, people get into raiding at different times. Not everyone's around for fucking ever. So it's kind of a shitty mentality to have, but, uh, you know, I'm just, just forwarding that thought process. I personally have 11 plus years in endgame raiding experience. Uh, we're all middle aged MMO players. Uh, why do you think we're hitting this wall trying to engage in discussion? Because people. It's the internet. People suck at discussion. I suck at discussion, and I do this for a living. That's that's the truth. Like, people are very resistant to anything that is against their personal ideals. That's true in most aspects of life. You occasionally meet that one great person who just blows your mind because they're super receptive, they're not argumentative, they're open to your ideas, they may not agree with them, yada, 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 you know, whatever it is. But man, people, especially in MMOs, people are just fucking ignorant and hate having actual discussions if it doesn't end in you agreeing with them that's just after i've got 11 plus years in experience as well you know i've seen this shit for over a decade and it's just it, i'd say if anything you got to try to find the right people to engage conversation with because if you just try to just throw the idea out there most people who agree with you will kind of just stay silent about it whereas some most of the people who want to respond to you are the people who want to disagree with you and it's fucking it's fucking awful <laughs> that's that's just it that's that's just people are just obsessed with shit like the meta and you know what's best and what's trash and what's not and people don't know how to properly function in a society and it's fucked up and it's annoying <laughs> this is all truth and you all know everyone who's like a good person who's listening to this right now they're going like that's why I don't go on the official forums. <laughs> that's it. That's why I don't go on Reddit. That's why That's why I don't talk and shout chat. You know, it's just something, something, something is always there. And it's just so much hyperbole and so much just not discussion of one-sided conversations. And it's, it's, it's fucking awful. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it. It's just bad. And you know what? It's not even just in MMOs. You run into that shit with anything in life, man. But some topics are just better than others. And MMOs is just a place where people don't want to have discussions. They just want to be right. All right, number 15. Hello, Mr. Happy. Two questions here. First, 
What the hell is a trap party? A trap party is a popular term for a group that says it's one thing and it's not. Like, hey, this is a clear party. It must have seemed to enrage. Three deaths and you wipe. And then the party leader dies every single pull on the first mechanic. Shit like that. Must have achievement to clear. Party leader doesn't have achievement. Half the party doesn't have achievements. Shit like that is a trap party where you go in with one expectation and that expectation is defied in every way possible. Now, to be fair, under that pretense, let's say you join a learning party and then you clear it in one pull. By my definition, that's technically a trap, but if it is a trap, that's the kind of trap everyone wishes they would get, just not the trap anyone actually gets. Second, when you and Sly were talking about sinking Ultimate Bahamut on State of the Realm, two questions popped up. So a mini roulette. Nothing to do with sink. Everything to do with sink. I love sinks. I wash dishes in them. Alright, oh my god. Okay. I've been poking around 14 subreddit for a while, and the idea of using Ultimate as a way to eventually fill holes in content. Basically, let them degrade naturally and organically to give people not quite able to do Cutting Edge Ultimate some more content to do. If each Ultimate is perpetually synced, do you think there will eventually be no one running it? I mean, there's going to be no one running this in, like, 4.2. What, <laughs> what does it matter? The only people who run it in 4.2 are people who are like, well, our item level's higher, let's see if we can just cheese the fuck out of this fight, and then they're going to die to Twisters in the first 15 seconds, and they're going to give up immediately. So... It is what it is. Ultimate's one of those fights where getting through the phases faster is really nice, but if you literally can't do the very basics of the fight, you're gonna die. Like, you can't just say, oh, well, fuck Twisters. Just everyone stand still and eat their Twister. You can't do that. Oh, Liquid Hells, who cares? Don't bother baiting those. Oh, Hatches? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just stand just stand under the boss. It won't kill the melees. You can't do that with, with gear. You know, at least, for, at least not for a very long time. And even when you can, it's probably still gonna result... In people dying because the wall is a guaranteed death for anyone so then you can't do dive bombs in the nail phase no people don't do the ice balls properly any of those things lead into a problem so even if you have more gear if you literally can't do the bases of it you're not going to clear it so that's I, I guess it doesn't ultimately matter whether or not you're able to sink it the only thing with sinking is that your your dps needs to be on par but at least for the very least even if you aren't sinking it your mechanics need to be on par so there's there's a little bit more room for people dying if they fuck up because you'll have the added dps but ultimately it's uh it's gonna be a bit of a problem i don't think leaving it so that it's unsynced and that people as they improve gear level pe people who improve gear level won't necessarily go back to the fight they won't go back to the fight until it's not a challenge at all is the problem People are just of that mentality, you know, path of least resistance. So you may run into the occasional one or two groups that doesn't want to do it that way, but eh, good luck finding that. Good luck, good luck finding that, because that's not super common in the game. So uh, I, I don't think it's going to fill holes in in the gaps in other patches. I think it's just, if you don't beat it this patch, you're going to wait till you can unsync it and it's a complete joke, and then you'll do it. Like that's what people are going to do most likely. All right, two questions left on the forums. Hey, yo, Mr. Happy. Hey, oh, what's up? So I have an important question and then a couple of so simple it makes me feel dumb questions. So I'm pretty new having only come around 3.4 and having a break for three months before Stormblood dragging me back kicking and screaming. I've had a good time and a real love affair with tanking. However, I often feel like I've missed my chance. Oh yeah, I've had this question before. So let's, I think we could go just directly through the questions because I think I know the point here. So how does someone coming in today recently manage to get through this older content? People just start party findering. Like party findering Omega Savage is a reasonable thing to be able to do. Um, there's plenty of groups there that even if you're brand new, as long as you meet their item level requirements, which are, to be honest, a little absurd most of the time, uh, as long as you can perform and learn and improve and you just keep joining party finders, eventually you just kind of find your way into it. I've seen plenty of people come up and then beat it. I mean, you just had an example early on of someone who has like little to no experience in 14 rating and they managed to make their breakthrough. They just had the right mentality to do it. And as long as you're persistent and you're willing to work, work for it, and I know it's a video game and it sounds like a bullshit concept, but... Uh, you know, if you want something, you got to put in some effort. Even if it's, even if you don't want to call it work, call it effort. You got to do something. And that's where most new people are starting is just by joining party finders and trying to kind of find themselves when it comes to their uh, their raid performance. As a side effect, how does new players breaking into raiding? Uh, yeah, I guess that, that kind of answers uh, both of the questions there. As for dumb questions, how do you pronounce leave quest? There you go. Why are femros so rare? I don't know. Maybe... Maybe dudes are just like, I don't know, it's dudes, probably just dudes' faults. Dudes want to play cute cat girls, they don't want to play femros, because, I don't know, it's just not their fantasy. You guys are weird. Anyway, why the hell doesn't Warrior get an AoE until 45? You have overpower. It's not AoE, but it is AoE, it's just a cone AoE, so there you go. Uh, what exactly makes him your boy, and why is he blue? That was something he had beforehand. There's an origin to that, I just, he, that's, that's, that's his thing. 
he had that before I met him. So there you go. Uh, let's see. And are all Garlean here, or are they separate races altogether? I'm pretty sure almost all of them are Hures. They're, I mean, they're Garlean technically, but they take on the appearance of Hures is, uh, is more accurate. All right, number 17. Hey, Mr. Happy, I hope you had a good weekend. I know I did. Well, now that the moving is... The unpacking is not done, so, you know, it's not even done yet. So, the question for this week is, did you watch BlizzCon? No. BlizzCon is just always... I just like, okay, new WoW expansion. What are they doing for StarCraft 2? Overwatch, they're getting overambitious with. Diablo, I don't think, had anything. If they did, they didn't have it all during, during the opening. And then Hearthstone is like, all right, that's doing well. It's fun to watch sometimes, but I'm not going to care about the single-player... That they're adding to Hearthstone. Oh, we'll get more people to buy it, more uh, or more people to buy into it. Probably people who are afraid of strictly PvP style stuff. Um, but I will. I did. I know what happened. I just didn't watch it. Is there anything disappointing? I don't think so. I don't think there was anything inherently disappointing. I think that there's a lot of overreaching by Blizzard. Uh, they come up with ideas before there's. They come up with ideas before they've had proof of concept. It's something they've kind of just always done, where they just they have ideas and they just do them. Overwatch for me is kind of like the biggest, like, what are you doing, man? Like, Overwatch League charging $20 million to get it on the franchising. They Overwatch is like the viewership of StarCraft II, which everyone considers like a dead eSport. Like, when an eSport that, like, the eSports community says, okay, this eSport is fucked, has the same viewership as what you are trying to propose as a $20 million investment. I mean, you could argue that it'll grow and that the franchisee options will be worth it in the long run if it's supported properly uh, i'm for overwatch i'm just not convinced i feel like there's like a mega overreach when it comes to what they're trying to get out of overwatch it reminds me of heroes of the storm it was created for esports i think heroes of the storm has even less viewership than starcraft 2 no actually heroes of the storm is really easy to watch so heroes of the storm actually has pretty decent viewership believe it or not it just doesn't have a very prominent esports scene because of the way the game is designed and balanced. So, oh man. And then, wow, you have Battle for Azeroth. I mean, that sounds like, and I had this discussion in my stream earlier, that makes it sound like the last expansion. Battle for Azeroth? I think back to, and again, I had this exact same discussion, like word for word. Final Fantasy XI Rhapsody's a fan of deal was the end. I mean, the end. Realistically, they could still make another expansion if they wanted to. Uh, 15 year anniversary for that game is soon. But. Battle of Azeroth makes it sound like the end. And I was like, ah, yeah. And, and then they announced the vanilla servers. <laughs> okay, with the vanilla servers, I'm more curious than anything. Because I didn't play vanilla WoW. Well. I had friends that, you know, were addicts to it. Like, friends that didn't go to class. You know, they didn't show up to high school for days or weeks because they were too busy getting into vanilla WoW. And then I had a friend who was in the, one of the first ten guilds to down Kel'Thuzad in Nax Ramus on the 40-man before the Burning Crusade patch. So I had friends that were mega hardcore. I, I don't want vanilla servers to crash and burn. But I want to see how people actually react to one that's not a private server. Because there's going to be people who revolt against it with what happened with the private server. There's gonna And then there's going to be people who try it and they're like, what the fuck? I don't want to play this old age shit and then what is what does blizzard do do they do they keep do they patch the vanilla servers to fix shit still they can't add new content to the vanilla servers unless they're progression servers in which case then they'll unlock burning crusade eventually which may be eventually what it evolves into is trying to basically recycle your own mmo to make more money and i don't know how well that's going to work but it's going to be playing purely on nostalgia and again not optimistic but with how many people subscribed to the old to the private server that got shut down by blizzard when they see when they sent them a cease and desist uh it could at least be good enough to be worth their investment which is really all that matters for blizzard at the end of it um but people who see it for the first time <sighs> listen i may not have played it but i've seen many many hours dated a girl who played it whose uncle worked and that's not a meme and their uncle actually worked for blizzard i watched my friends do that, that hardcore prog back in vanilla you know i've seen all their clear videos and shit and i'm just like dude if you want to be a hunter on fucking nefarian and your weapons breaking if that's the kind of gameplay that you're fucking into or being a rogue teleported to the front of the boss and yes nefarian is the only example i'm using right now but it's the most hilarious example the most hilarious example i could think of go for it man have fun enjoy do whatever it is you want but if it crashes and burns i won't be surprised ultimately so that's the last question from the forums uh, i'm going to turn it over into the twitch chat at this point and grab a few questions from there assuming you guys have good enough questions so hopefully you do go right ahead 
All right, so the first question we have from the Twitch chat is an elaborate one, but a good one. Uh, Mr. Happy with the rumored 4.2 Glamour overhaul. It's not even a rumored overhaul. Yoshi P said it. We just don't know the context of like what the overhaul is. Would you like to see more customizable options like toggling off man purses, scrolls, or ex uh, extra... Ugh, I can never say that word. Attachables. Although there are currently limitations on showing FC crests and in instances, would you like to see crest emblems attachable? So crests for me are difficult because uh, most of the time I can't see them properly anyway because of my color blindness. For all that other stuff, it's nice. I'm someone who doesn't really know much about glamour, nor do I particularly put any interest into it. That being said, I'm always I'm always for more options. I, just because I don't use them doesn't mean I should be against them. Granted, it also shouldn't be taking away from parts of the game I care about. No, I'm kidding. It's whatever. There's tons of shit in this game that I actually don't partake in, like crafting, gathering, and they deserve content as much as everyone else. And glamour is a big deal for people, so it's it's basically the same way. I'm just memeing. Um, would they do it? I don't think they will. I don't think that's part of the, the overhaul. The things that need to be overhauled about glamour more particularly is, as very direct example when you have two different jobs that share armor but you want different glamour it needs that's one thing that needs to be worked on immediately the other thing is just that glamour is such a huge inventory hog um all other games that do glamour in the modern day pretty much have like a log of items you've collected and you could just apply the skin to whatever you're wearing because it's way easier to do that on the player than it is for the way that final fantasy 14 does it Final fantasy 14 you have to get the prism and you need to unlock it in the first place so you get it at 15 now and then you know you need to have the item you don't need to always have it on you but you need to own the item and it's 14 is a mess and it needs to be overhauled anyway to do some of the more basic things that other mmos offer when it comes to glamour systems but that thing that would require an expansion level change of glamour like not even a, not a minor patch like an expansion level of change to the way that data is handled on your character for that to be possible. Alright, we actually have a lot of good questions. Very wordy questions, but very good questions. Uh, so, Mr. Happy, since the since Ultimate took nearly 12 days to be cleared, the fight's difficulty was as absurd as the devs were stating it would be when people were just saying, ah, it'll probably be cleared in a day or two. Myself included. Do you think world tier groups would be more likely to take Ultimate Series difficulty comments uh, by the devs more seriously in the future, uh, now that they've gotten first-hand experience with it? Uh, will they take it? So, I'll tell you this much. Any group that only took a week off from their life to do Ultimate this time, is probably taking two weeks off next time. So, that's them giving respect to the devs' comments to some degree. Now, if the next one takes less than a week, then it's going to go back to, uh, what do we really believe? But I, I don't even think the concern is whether or not they believe dev comments about it. I think it's people have a hard time believing any of the future Ultimate fights will even compare to this one. It's because it's Coil. When you lead with Coil, it creates not trust issues, but a lack of belief that something else could could secede it, or could even match it, or could even come close to the experience you had with it. Like when we talk about Titan was almost the first Ultimate. And then pseudo push for it being Bahamut. What the fuck would a 19 minute Titan fight look like? What are you just going to throw the other primals in there just to make it a Titan? Just to make it a longer fight? What the fuck does a 19 minute Titan fight look like? I couldn't tell you. And I couldn't even begin to imagine it. And when I think about other bosses or other... Like there's only so few examples you think, well yeah, they could do a 19 minute fight for that fucking thing. And you think of things like the Warring Triad, or, you know, all of all of the Crystal Tower, or all of... It just You basically need to combine, like, three to five bosses to even consider it in your head. And that is a difficult expectation to follow up, so... I think they'll take the difficulty comment seriously, but in their head, there's always going to be this... It can't be, as, it can't be as bad as Coil, right? That's always going to be lingering. So, they'll listen, but... There's always going to be a bit of doubt in the back of your head. All right, so the next one I have says it's a psychological question. How do you feel about knowing the gear you aim to get will be useless? Dude, all gear in every MMO is useless. It's a video game. That's how I feel. It's all useless. Unless it's like Diablo 3 and I'm going to sell it for real money on that auction house that doesn't exist anymore. It's all meaningless. It's a virtual thing that doesn't exist. It has no value whatsoever in the real world. It has value to people in terms of keepsake or accomplishment. But it has no real value, period. You're always... Any video game you play over time is an endless journey 
any, I should say, any uh, constantly updated game is an endless journey. They need it to be because that's how they make money. As soon as you're like, yeah, I earned this. I don't need anything else. You're going to stop playing. So they always need to make something new that's worth it more than what you had before. Whether it's in a horizontal progression or a vertical progression, you need something that is better than the last thing to get people to care about the new thing. As soon as you stop doing that, you create issues, which is why Guild Wars 2 is a game I have such huge issues with, because they're so obsessed with this idea of making your character evolve, but keeping your gear, like, super boring. And don't get me wrong, 14 is super guilty. Gear is boring as shit in Final Fantasy 14. But at least it gets better when a new patch comes out. You get something that's stronger, your character feels stronger, and it's a very straightforward means of improving it. So, it's all worthless. That's how I feel about any item I've ever received in any game ever. It's all worthless. It's worth absolutely nothing in terms of actual value. All right, so uh, I answered a few questions from the Twitch chat. I actually had to redo this take here because there was a mess up in the previous take regarding the sponsor list, which we're going to get into in a second here. We had some good questions from the Twitch chat this week. Uh, keep in mind that if you want to ask questions for Mondays with Mr. Happy, there's a forum under the YouTube video if you're watching here live. If you're here live normally at 1230 p.m.-ish uh, PDT is when we do it. Although, sometimes it's later, like today, it was like four hours later because I was doing Ultimate Prompt. So, be sure to ask your questions for next week. As for the sponsor list, which I have now updated and made sure that it is correct, at least it better be because I've now taken the time to modify it with my chat with the people who, for some reason, were not appearing on it. We gotta thank our sponsors for Patreon. We opened up a Patreon about three months ago at this point uh, to counter hashtag demonetized on YouTube. It has been great and it has been ensuring that no matter what the monetization status is of my YouTube videos, that I can just post them as soon as they are ready i do not want to have to wait and be like well i do this for a living so i kind of need the ad revenue and then i gotta wait and then it's like not worth it or i need to go live and then if it goes unmonetized after an after a day it's a whole huge complicated thing and i can completely not give a fuck about it thanks to people over here on patreon making my life a million times easier so for our mondays with mr happy weekly sponsors we have our standard sponsors with Mr. Sinister, Argati, Fafarian, Rendell, Giraffes Will Rule, Stevie Rex, and Neon. We then have our elite sponsors, the next tier up. We have Marsh Techie, Elisan, Lior, Sour Cream, and Chives from Genova, Valestra, Fanfrit, Kiriyoshi, and Reckless Tea Party on Cactar, Agnes Faragun from the Diablo server, Goisha Valfer of Siren, Jean Francois, The Macho, Lewis, Hirsch vs. Safari, Phoenix Down Free Company on Goblin, Saren from Zodiac, and Renoa Chikara. And then finally, we have the premium sponsors of Krovos Moonscar, Naku Niame, Janiwa Odin of Tonberry, Aqua's Sacrifice, Obaido Shamsi, Spike, Nadine Kirasame, Rudy Rudiger, Tin Colossus, Kuja Cross of the Denova server, Ahmed Kurani, Oni Abdullah, Killer Hackman, Rawl Jr., Darklight2013, Arthur Ramil, Gaming Bishop, and Kiltastic Jones. If your name was on the list last week and it wasn't on the name, uh, wasn't on the list this week, Keep in mind, I sent out DMs to people who got declined on Patreon. Sometimes Patreon declines, or maybe you just weren't able to support another month. Either way, you are awesome for supporting any month that you did. So, you know, shout out to you guys, regardless of whether or not you're still supporting. You guys have been awesome over on Patreon. You guys have been awesome over here on YouTube. And for those of you on Twitch, you guys have been awesome there. You guys have just been awesome. How about that? High five. High five for awesome. On that note, though, I'm starving. I've been eating all day. I'm going to go grab something to eat, and I'm going to take care of some business i got to take care of before this next week rolls over. we got comrades on Tuesday. we got some videos planned for the week, so be on the lookout. I will see all you fine ladies and gentlemen next time. Until then, take care.